uh, let me start. Um, let me start with you, Betsy, and, and then and then I want you to take me through your reporting as well. Where where does this stand right now in terms of what you and your colleagues at Politico are reporting, Betsy? A person with knowledge of Cassidy Hutchinson's fourth and final closed door deposition that she had with the January 6th Select Committee shortly before her public hearing has told me that in that deposition, she provided testimony that was the basis for both of the slides that the Select Committee put up on, on screen at the end of her hearing that Cheney, Congresswoman Liz Cheney, the vice chair, characterized as evidence of inappropriate and problematic efforts to, to influence a witness. In the case of one of those slides, there's a name redacted, only referred to in brackets as a person. What I'm told is that the person's name there is Mark Meadows, and then it's a conversation that Hutchinson testified to the select committee that she had with someone who was functioning as an intermediary for Mark Meadows. That conversation came on the eve of Hutchinson's second deposition earlier this year to the January 6th Select Committee. The committee now has to figure out how much more context than they, can they get. Can they get additional substantiation of these conversations? Can they nail down and confirm participants, details, call logs, records, other things that would provide and flesh out details about what type of communications happened and what influence the people uh, involved in those communications may have been seeking to exert. Regardless, it's something that clearly has shot to the top of the select committee's priority list. And it's notable that at the very end of a hearing that was, I would say, by far the most the most stunning of any of the select committee hearings thus far, this was sort of the capstone that they chose to leave viewers with. Betsy, uh, Meadows is, um, through a spokesperson, denying um, that behavior. What is the committee's degree of confidence that it was Meadows? Meadows has denied that there was any inappropriate communication. Meadows' spokesperson did not deny that there was a conversation that could have been had between someone in Meadows' camp and Hutchinson regarding her testimony. They didn't deny that. What's the committee's wow. confidence? that a person acting as an, and that's just from reading the statement. What's the committee's confidence right. that a person acting as an intermediary told this to Hutchinson? We should assume, I think, that their confidence is quite high because their confidence overall in Hutchinson's credibility is extraordinarily high, despite a lot of pushback that she's received from various quarters, including anonymous Secret Service agents in the wake of her testimony. The committee has been unequivocal that they believe her. They think she's credible. They take her very seriously. They don't see her as someone who people should approach with skepticism. And I have no doubt that that includes the closed door testimony that she provided to them in her in her most recent deposition about these communications that she received. Yeah, I mean, Jackie, publicly and privately, um, the vice chair has doubled down on the veracity of Hutchinson's testimony. And we should say Mark Meadows was caught lying in, of all things, his book by saying that Trump didn't really want to go to the Capitol. We now have pretty rock solid testimony. Even in the Secret Service's denial of the strangle scene, they confirmed that Trump was angry that he couldn't go to the Capitol. So I, I think if there's anyone with a credibility problem today, it's Mark Meadows. Yeah, and Nicole, after all of the chest thumping that we heard from uh, anonymous Secret Service sources this week about uh, Tony Mornado and Bobby Engel disputing and taking issue with elements of Cassidy's story, it, it's the end of the week now, and we have yet to receive an on-the-record statement from either of those players. They also have not testified under oath, and we've reported that According to two people familiar with the investigation, there are some issues with Tony Ornato's credibility. That's why he was brought in for a second deposition, uh, because there were some holes in his first deposition, and uh, lawmakers needed to follow up with him to get some clarity. It also should be no surprise for anyone, especially who's read my colleague Carol Lennox's book, that uh, the ties between Secret Service and the former president still remain close. Ornato himself occupied a very unusual space, being some 
someone who's toggled back and forth between the agency uh, and a political position in the White House and has remained very close with the president, continues to talk to him to this day. But I think all of this speaks to uh, the strategy that the former president employs with those who are in his orbit. He keeps them close to him in some way through promises of employment, contributions to their own political, uh, personal causes. And, and while he has uh, usually been reticent to spend money from his PAC, uh, Save America PAC is spending some money on these legal fees. Now, Cassidy Hutchinson did request that the, that, uh, the Trump the former Trump presidency help out with some of these fees. There was a realization that the legal fees themselves were going to be, were going to accumulate and be impossible for a 26 year old, 25 year old to be able to pay herself right out of college and after serving in government for several years. Um, yeah. But obviously something happened here where she realized she needed to get out of that arrangement, seek an independent lawyer and uh, emerge from this orbit. Yeah, and I mean, her lawyer is a lifelong Republican who worked for Jeff Sessions. She didn't really head to um, outside the ideological spectrum. I want to read more from your reporting, Jackie, about the money. You write this. Um, Trump has also kept former aides tightly in his orbit through promises of employment and contributions to their political causes. Though he has been loath to spend money from his PAC, as you just said, sometimes resisting aides' suggestions for even small outlay, out, outlays. Last year, his Save America PAC sent a million dollars to the Conservative Partnership Institute a nonprofit group where Meadows is a senior partner. The donation came about one month after the House committee was formed. While Trump advisors insisted that there was no quid pro quo involved with the donation, Trump has been inclined to keep Meadows in the fold, even when he's annoyed with him at times, people familiar with the matter said. I mean, Jackie, you, you, you seem to be um, encircling, you, you know, what, which is what, one of the great mysteries about Meadows, who turns over so much material. It clearly has a directional impact on the 1-6 committee, they pursue Sean Hannity. They they see they now have an invitation out to Ginny Thomas. I mean, so much of the leads from sort of the, the, the beginning of 2022 seem to have emanated from his text. And then he clams up. He stops talking. He faces contempt of Congress charges. What is the committee's interest in trying to figure out why? It's, they have a, a huge interest. And as I think Cassidy Hutchinson in her testimony demonstrated, she put fingerprints on all of the key people who were privy and had firsthand uh, accounts of the former president's potentially criminal activity, especially on the day of January 6th, Mark Meadows being one of them, Pat Cipollone being another one of them. Pat Cipollone, also someone that the president has treated poorly, who the president has, the former president has constantly complained about to confidants. He was as close to a, a no man as could get in that White House, at least. Uh, but he has still continued to remain loyal, which has, has uh, puzzled some some people who have been watching this saga play out, uh, though we are hearing that he is coming close to reaching a negotiation with the committee about appearing or providing some sort of written deposition next week uh, to the committee behind closed doors. Uh, that being said, I, I think that Cass many moments of Cassidy's uh, testimony, which was really jam-packed with news beyond this Secret Service um, incident that, that she described having, and, and very clearly described it as a secondhand account from Tony, Tony Ornato, but that Meadows was there throughout all of Trump's potential dereliction of duty and also contributed to that dereliction of duty by, by doing nothing himself.